What's up, my name is Technobe here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be talking about optimizing Minecraft Optifine for the best possible FPS. This video is going to target Minecraft 1.18 and the latest version of Optifine, though the settings should carry across to pretty much any version of Optifine. If you're missing anything that I have or you have anything extra, just simply use common sense to fill in the gaps. Obviously, the lower you push all of your settings, the better FPS you'll be getting and the more smooth and reliable your gameplay will be. On top of this, this video is not going to go into optimizing Windows at all. I'd highly recommend you check the description down below for Windows 10, Windows 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more out of your computer. You can get a ton of extra FPS by optimizing everything else, closing all background processes, stopping things starting with your computer, turning off as many overlay softwares as possible, etc, etc. Obviously, make sure everything's up to date and fire up your Minecraft with Optifine installed so we can start the optimization. To begin, first things first, I'm setting at a solid 6 FPS for some reason or another. The absolute best thing you can do for FPS in Minecraft is to not use a shader pack to begin with. As much as you may like shader packs, this is unfortunately something you'll have to give up for a ton of extra FPS. There are certain shader packs that are designed for low-end computers that don't take away too much from your performance. So when you do optimize things and get way above your comfortable minimum threshold for FPS, you can turn on shader packs once more. As you can see, we've jumped up to a whopping 12 FPS, but of course things aren't running the way we expect them to. Why is that? Well, I'm running Optifine with default or even less than default settings. I've had to turn a couple of things back and I think I may have turned something down a bit too far. Anyways, from 6 to 13 FPS, that's already doubling it and definitely something that'll help a huge amount in showing just how far Optifine can push Minecraft. So to begin, I'll hit escape, head into options, then video settings, and this is where we're starting. We've already covered shaders. If you're running any kind of shaders, goodbye FPS. Let's head across to the performance tab, which is the best place to get started. And of course, changing some of these settings may freeze your Minecraft for some time. So if I'm going too fast, do make sure to pause this video. Basically, we want everything on this window turned on. Fast render on, fast math, smooth world, dynamic updates, lazy chunk loading on, smooth FPS, smart animations. This one tends to freeze your game for a little while and render regions at the very top as well. Also turn that on. The chunk builder in the bottom right should absolutely be set to threaded for the best possible performance and chunk updates you can comfortably leave on one. You can raise this, but it will lower your FPS. Simply just by changing settings on the performance tab, which is the only real place I go in the Optifine menu, we're already on 26, 29, 30-ish FPS, which is a huge improvement over what we had before. Looking at the main options in the video settings over here, there's a couple of things that we can go ahead and change. Render distance is completely dependent on RAM that you have in your computer and how much you've allocated to Minecraft. The more chunks you have loaded, the slower your game will run, and this is very, very true. You can crank this all the way down to around 6 or 8 for much better FPS pretty much instantly. You can see that I've already jumped up to 113-ish FPS. The simulation distance, of course, is something that will only really affect you. If you're playing single-player worlds, this won't have too much of an impact on multiplayer, but it should match the render distance right above it. You can turn this down a little bit as well. Personally, I just have them both match so everything works properly that I can see. Graphics fancy in the top left. Obviously, there are different options here, and depending on what you're comfortable with, you can turn this up to fabulous, then once more to turn it down to fast for even more FPS. Though on my computer, this doesn't seem to have too much of an impact, though it definitely does when I'm looking around and things are changing. Already, we're sitting at a comfortable 200 FPS, or at least around there, which is an absolutely huge growth over the total of six that we started with. Much, much better. Heading back into options, video settings, GUI scale and brightness have absolutely no impact on your FPS. Max frame rate, I would recommend turning this all the way up unless Minecraft is eating your entire computer and you're trying to say record it and things like that and it's not letting you record properly because Minecraft is eating too much of your computer. You can lower this to just below the FPS that you're currently getting in game to limit how much of your computer the game can eat away at. Smooth lighting can mess around with how some objects look and things like that. You may want to leave this on maximum or at least minimum and smooth lighting level, that's pretty much your preference. 
setting us to off. I'm setting it 134-ish FPS, cranking it up. Once again, 134-ish FPS, nothing much has changed. In fact, it's even gone up a little bit. It's a very minimal impact. Entity shadows I would usually have on, having this off may lead to things looking a little bit weird, especially when you're looking around, say, villages and things like that, they have a shadow, this is the shadow that it gets rid of, also your own shadow in third person. It's a very odd thing to turn off and has minimal impact on your computer, but the option is there for you. Attack indicator, this is the crosshair in the center of your screen, I'd usually leave this as is without changing too much. Dynamic FOV, of course, is when you're running around it, raises your field of view and things like that, this is completely user preference. Dynamic lights, I'd usually have this off, but you can turn this on if you'd like to see torch, glowstone, etc. in your hand illuminating the world as you walk around. Obviously having this on will lead to lower FPS. If you absolutely need it on, have it set to fast. So the next tab after shaders, which should obviously be off, is the details tab. Obviously inside of here, the more things we turn down, the better FPS we can expect. I'll look over here at some trees. So first of all, clouds. Fancy are the 3D block clouds off, obviously off. Default is flat and 2D and fast is flat and 2D. Obviously, if you have this on fast, the best option for this, clouds are 2D. As long as you don't actually reach them, this is probably fine for gameplay and things will look pretty much okay. Trees is where you'll notice a huge difference. Fancy, you can see through the trees. Default, you can't see through the trees at all. Fast, once again, you can't see through them at all. Smart, you can see through the trees, though it seems to hide the blocks behind whatever the first face is. As you can see here, I can see one face, but nothing really behind that. So if you do want to see through them, I'd highly recommend having it on fancy, just because that leads things to look the best. But of course, fast is something you can set this to if you absolutely need FPS. Rain and snow, this is user preference. Personally, I like turning this off, but of course it is situational. You'll only lose FPS in specific situations. Sky, obviously you can turn this on or off to completely get rid of clouds or have them in the first place. Turning it off will give you better FPS, but personally, I just like having this on. Stars, once more, this is situational only at nighttime. Turn this off for a little bit of extra FPS. Sun and moon, you can also turn this off. But again, the world looks a little bit too empty when it's turned off, in my opinion. Capes isn't something you really need, and it's situational. I have a cape, so this will only really affect other people when they see me. Fog, turned to fancy by default, is usually something that'll give people better FPS for some reason when you leave this as default. You can turn this to off to see a bit better, especially at low render distance, but of course the world becomes very obvious where things end. Having this set to fancy is nice and smooth, and that's really the only two options you have. You can rake this really short, or of course a lot bigger. I'd recommend having this on the highest option so you can see the most in your world. View bombing, user preference, held item tooltips, user preference, autosave indicator, user preference, and swamp colors, of course, are also user preference as well. You can turn this off for a tiny boost of FPS when in swamp environments, but it's not really that noticeable. The biome blending option over here, once again, you can turn to fastest for a little bit extra FPS if you really, really need it on your computer, though you can usually leave this as is. Alternate blocks, I'd usually recommend leaving turned on, especially if you have specific resource packs. Finally, vignette, you can leave this on fast or fancy. This is basically the dark effect around the side and corners of your screen. This really has minimal effect on the actual game itself, and of course is user preference. It's nothing really to worry about. You can set this to fast and leave it as is. The next tab, animations. This is all pretty much user preference, though the more you have turned off him, the better FPS you can expect. You can see him sitting at around 160, or at least I jumped up there with all of them off, and all of them turned back on, my FPS goes down a little bit. Obviously, very, very situational depending on what's happening around you, and this is a good place to come if you're experiencing some odd FPS drops while you're running around the world. On top of this, we also have a preset in the bottom right, all particles decreased, minimal, etc. This is sort of a global option that affects everything on the screen. If you would like to still have certain particles, this is where you can change it, so you don't need to choose between all on or all off. Really simple and self-explanatory. You can go through this with a fine comb, but of course I'll just be leaving them all on as the game looks a little bit better that way. The performance tab we've already been through, let's have a look at quality. 
So inside of him, a lot of these are user preference, but of course they do have some sort of an impact on your game. I'm sitting at around 150 FPS, but if we lower these, each setting in here tends to reload a lot of things in the game you'll notice a rather big-ish boost in FPS with everything here turned off. Obviously, hovering over things will tell you a bit more about what they do, and if you're quick, you can usually change two of these things at once without the world reloading entirely in between. Having everything turned off here, or at least as low as possible, you will expect some sort of FPS gain, especially when you're around different moving objects and things like that, and of course, with everything turned off, you may not notice too many things being different. Though, that being said, Connected textures and things like that can change, of course, when we lower some of the settings there. So all the way up to 180-ish FPS, and the game feels a ton smoother than it did previously. So that is a really big improvement, though even running around, as you can see, my FOV is no longer changing. It's a little bit odd, and it's much more like a classic Minecraft experience than anything. Finally, the other tab. This is all four different things we can turn off whether make the game full screen, which I would recommend for more FPS, show the lagometer, for example, which you'll see somewhere on the screen, usually F3, yep, in the bottom left and bottom right, there's now two graphs. This is really for debugging and getting even more out of your computer and the game, but of course you don't really need to worry about this tab at all. The full screen mode slider at the very bottom here allows us to adjust the resolution, which should net us some extra FPS, especially if you're really, really struggling for FPS and OptiFine hasn't helped you out that much. So we've gone through pretty much all of the graphics settings here. I haven't pushed everything as low as possible. And the last thing, personally, I would leave the trees on. Fancy. There we go. This is how I would be comfortable playing Minecraft. The render distance is a little bit low for me, and we're sitting around at 250, 260 ish FPS, which is an infinite number of times better than just 6 FPS, which we started this video with. Once again, I'm not too sure how it got that low, but it really has been a huge improvement. If I quickly head back and turn on shaders once more, you'll see that instead of dropping all the way down to, say, 12 FPS, the game looks a ton better and we're sitting at a solid 60 FPS, whereas before I was sitting at a low. 20-ish running around and playing the game. The game looks a ton better, especially using a low-end shader pack and sitting at well above 60 FPS is really, really acceptable, especially on a low-end computer. My PC, of course, is far from low-end, but this video will definitely help you, especially if you're struggling for FPS and you need a ton more out of the game. Optifine is really a great way of getting it. Even though things are a lot lower than I usually would have them set, the game does look very, very nice indeed, especially with the shader pack being that icing on the cake. It takes it from looking like classic Minecraft all the way to something a lot more pleasant to the eyes. Anyways, with that comes the end of the video. I don't think there's much else to cover with Optifine. We've gone through all of the settings, at least that I can think of, and we've got the most out of the game. The final, final thing that I could mention is the field of view. This is completely user preference and has some impact on the game. Higher usually means lower FPS and lower means more FPS, but it really is ultimately user preference. You'll either play too zoomed in for your liking or too far out, so have this wherever you're comfortable and play with that as much FPS as it costs you. Your personal experience is much more important than the number of FPS you're receiving. So with that, comes the end of the video. You can push things for the absolute limit, but of course leave it wherever you're comfortable and whatever makes you feel the best while playing the game. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno, but here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.